Jenna Ben Scherscher, today's guest, is a cancer survivor, civil rights advocate, world traveler, and tiny twister who dreams big. She is the CEO of Twist Out Cancer, an international nonprofit providing psychosocial support to people touched by cancer through creative arts programs. She'll also share insights about her superpower. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. Welcome to the Superpowers for Good Show. Jenna, thank you so much for coming back and doing another episode of the show with me. It's been a while. It has been. Thank you for having me. Yeah, when, when I had you on the show before, and I'm forgetting now how long it's been, but it's been like five or six years at least, mm-hmm. uh, things were pretty new, relatively speaking, in your journey. And I think, I don't want to speak for you, but it felt to me like at the time you were surprised a little bit at how much resonance there was. That, there, that cancer is such a deeply personal thing that you were experiencing that there was like people really were, in, were grateful for and there was this emotional connection in some ways that had surprised you. Well, since that time, it seems like what you've done has just mushroomed. Uh, is that right? I mean, are we really seeing what, am I seeing what you're seeing? You are. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> it yeah. is. Yeah, no, it's I mean. It's just I- wonderful. Thank you. It's it's been a labor of love, and I feel really grateful that I'm surrounded by an incredibly supportive group of, you know, staff and board members and family that have helped me yeah. build this from the ground up. Well, it, it really is amazing work that you're doing. Um, the uh, Brushes with Cancer program was pretty new when we spoke last. Mm-hmm. I don't think that was an original thing with twist out cancer it was added later it was pretty new and we so and now it's become the big the big thing and it looks to me like it's working at a, a whole level that maybe you couldn't even have dreamed of tell us about brushes with cancer and what it's become yeah so yeah when we when we talked it was really still in its infancy and we had only really tested it a couple of times at that point and now you know i think we've We've done over 30 plus programs around the world. That includes Chicago, Midwest region every year. It includes Tel Aviv and Montreal, Toronto, Philadelphia, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Detroit. I mean, it's just totally um, spiraled. And I think what's interesting about that program is we match artists with people that have been touched by cancer and we call them our inspirations. And over six months, the inspiration has an opportunity to connect with their artist, share their story, and really process what they've gone through, what they're going through, what their fears are, you know, what their dreams are, all of it. And in that period of time of opening up and making themselves vulnerable, they then forge this connection with the artist, and the artist creates a work of art that's reflective of that journey. And, you know, that at the end of the program, we essentially have a large art exhibition or gala. We obviously had to really pivot and transition into the virtual space over the last two and a half years, which in many ways has opened up a lot of opportunities for us um, in terms of accessing people from all over the world that we otherwise wouldn't have connected with. And it also, I think interesting enough, has allowed us to think about the people that we're really trying to serve. So in the last 10 years now of running that program, we always sort of thought bigger is better. Like the larger the gala, the more participants, the better the program. And it sort of hit us in the face with COVID where everyone was worried about their health and their well-being and what is, you know, what risks they're willing to take to leave the house. I mean, it it was Especially cancer survivors, right? Yeah, exactly. And it dawned on us that Yes, we could have a 650 person event, but how many of our participants who are immunocompromised are going to feel comfortable in that kind of space? So we sort of made a decision during COVID and it has continued now as things have opened up that we will always have a virtual component to everything that we do because there are people that are stuck inside a hospital room that are not able to get out that want to access our programs and there are people that are you know recovering from treatment that are just don't have the counts to be able to go out Um, and then there are people that can't afford a plane ticket to come into chicago or to somewhere else and we want to make sure that accessibility is really at the forefront of everything that we're doing 
So it's been kind of amazing. I mean, I think that we've really been doing a lot of deep thinking about how we can improve what we're doing and how do we make it more accessible for folks. And in many ways, it's allowed us to get back to the mission, which is really to provide you know, creative arts programming so that it can serve as a mechanism for healing. And so everything that we do is creative arts focused, whether it's brushes with cancer, whether it's twist shops, which are art therapy workshops that we offer. And what's really, I think, wonderful about the model that we have is that these services are always free. They will forever remain free. Our, our job, my job primarily, is to make sure that we raise money in order to allow these programs to remain free and accessible for all. So back to brushes with cancer, I want to make sure that we're really clear. So the, the basic notion here is that you, you take someone who you, you call an inspiration, mm -hmm. a cancer survivor typically, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It becomes the inspiration for uh, an artist. And the artists you're getting are like serious artists, right? It, it's not Devin volunteering his time with a, a sketch pad or something. No, it's like the serious deal. Uh, then creating a beautiful work of art inspired by the, the cancer survivor. Am I getting that it. basically right? Okay. You got it. But I, I do think it's important. Yes, we have some unbelievable artists that have works in the MoMA and the Tate, you know, like, you know, crazy level art. But then we also have students that are unbelievably talented that are in it for the right reasons. So as much as the art is important, the most important part is the connection that is made between the artist and inspiration. So we have a pretty intensive application process for both the artist and inspiration to make sure that they're in it for the right reasons. We wanna make sure the inspiration is emotionally prepared for this type of undertaking and that the artist is as well and that they're doing it not just to promote their name, but they're doing it to support someone who is either enduring or has endured a health crisis. So it takes very special people to participate in this program. And it's amazing what ends up happening, you know, during the program and after. And the reason it's been sort of regional is that you come together at the end to unveil all of the works of art in a cohort. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure that's your word, but you know, a group, of, a group done in each series over a period, usually three or four months, then Shazam, there's a gala and everybody gets to see these works mm -hmm. of art for the first time. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. It's very powerful, I think, to come together as a community that's, you know, of people that have gone through this program and their loved ones and people that support the Twist community and to see that and experience that together. You know, during COVID, we started doing the reveals virtually and there was some benefit to that too, because it can be very intimate at a moment. I, I know personally, like I participated again this year, you know, to mark sort of my 10 year cancer anniversary for me. Mm -hmm. And I ended up being matched with this extraordinary artist, Kate Van Doren, who's based in Mexico. She's also an art therapist. She's a portrait artist. She's, she's just a very special human. And I found like 10 years later, after my cancer experience, I still had a ton of stuff to process. And I've been processing. It's not like I put it on hold and you know put it under the rug. Like I'm very much involved in therapy and all the things to like, you know, continue to nurture my survivorship and to be the best person that I can. And I still found that there was so much left to uncover and to explore and to challenge and to think about and to process. And Kate really allowed me that space and that connection to be able to do that. And we did our reveal on Instagram, which was good for the organization. I don't know if I would do it again that way. Um, I think it's important for people to see what a reveal can be like, but I was super vulnerable. I, I fell apart. I mean, it was so overwhelming for me to see someone else's depiction of my story and to see yeah. what resonated for them. So it can be powerful no matter where you're at in your journey with cancer. Yeah. What happens to the art after the reveal? So after the reveal, it is all auctioned and it's by design. 
So we, so most of the proceeds that we raise during the year actually comes from the art auction. And that is directly funneled right back into the program. So we have this sort of pay it forward model where you participate in the program, you go through this experience, the, the art is created, it's then auctioned, and it goes back and funds another participant to be able to participate in the program. So you know that by participating, you're allowing the next cohort of people to be able to participate. So it's this really beautiful sort of, you know, storytelling that leads to more storytelling and art that leads to more art. And it's, it's an amazing process. Um, and then we also have amazing connections that unexpectedly happen where you have a donor that, you know, may just show up and anonymous, anonymously donate the art to the inspiration. Other times, the inspiration will say, you know what, it was about the process for me. I actually don't want the art. I want it to live on in someone else's home. And that can be a really beautiful thing to be able to tell that story. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Now, you, you also have some art therapy programs. Tell us just a little bit about that. Yeah. So Jackie Carmody, who started as an artist with us in our second year of Brushes, she is an art therapist, absolutely brilliant artist and an amazing human. We came up with this idea that we wanted to sort of not normalize art therapy, but at least provide it to more people because a lot of times people don't have exposure to it. I mean, I certainly never did when I was in treatment. I know I would have really benefited from it. I know how important the arts are to me personally and how it's helped in allowing me to, to create a space to storytell essentially. And so she developed a program and we now have, I want to say about eight trained uh, twist shop facilitator. So the program is called Twist Shops and we run them both virtually and in person now. They're typically run anywhere between an hour and a half to two and a half hours. We've done them in an hour setting too. We work with other organizations. We work with families. It can range in age by topic. And what was really interesting is we actually, during COVID, opened them up to anyone uh, that wanted to participate. They didn't even have to have a cancer background. We sort of felt like COVID was this like e ultimate equalizer for everyone. Everyone was feeling anxious and worrying about their health. And so it allowed for them for a space to process what they were experiencing. And it was really beautiful to create that space, that hour, hour and a half for yourself to be able to create and sort of think through what, what you're managing. Yeah. That's inspiring. That's inspiring. Um, <laughs> Jenna, I think back to what you've accomplished over the last 10 years, and I really, I, I, I couldn't be more impressed. Yeah. Uh, it's really an inspiration to see what you have done. Um, as you think about all you've accomplished, what would you identify as the superpower that you have deployed in this work that has made it all possible? Well, I would say... I don't think it's a superpower because everyone has it, okay? I just chose to use it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'm not like some superhero here that was born a certain way. Like, I just chose to do this. So, you know, I think because I was diagnosed at 29 with a rare form of cancer called Gray's Own Lymphoma, I had like the whole world ahead of me and all of a sudden my life was put on pause. And I think because it came out of the blue and was almost so outrageous that I chose to be really vulnerable about my experience. I was open. I was honest. I was raw. I was unapologetic. And I think in turn, because I was so open about it, people felt comfortable opening up to me. And really that's what Twist is all about, right? It's about empowering people to come forward with their story so that they can process it and put it out there in the world. And you have no idea who that story is going to impact. I mean, that is the truth. And so to me, I think it comes down to just that vulnerability and owning that and not being scared to be vulnerable in front of a person or multiple people or a whole audience. I think that that has been what has allowed others to be vulnerable, but it has also allowed them to access me and for me to access them. And it's been a really beautiful relationship, I think, that has been built based on that. Yeah, as you think about how you've used that, can you identify a particular example of a success that became possible 
because of your superpower? A success that became possible. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, the twist started with me in my room. I had no hair. I was immunocompromised. I was underweight. I was, uh, my sense of balance was off. And I put up a video of myself doing the twist and said, who's joining me on the dance floor? This was not thought through. There was no high tech cameras. It was yeah. me and my laptop and I posted it on Facebook. And it was really a desperate call to action to say, I wanna see who you are. I wanna know who's following along because I know you're there, but I wanna see you. And so it was just a spark that I put out into the world. And as a result, look at what has happened. So to me, that is that pinpoint when we talk about like what changed. And I really see that in the people that come through brushes or come through twist shops, they are allowing themselves to be vulnerable and to open themselves up. And we just have no idea what sort of ripple effects are gonna happen after the fact. And to me, that is what's so beautiful about this program is that it's about those unexpected intersections and these sort of interactions that would never have happened if they didn't allow themselves to be vulnerable. Yeah. You obviously accomplished a lot. Um, as you reflect on this now, think about how you would coach other people to emulate your superpower in this kind of uh, the same way to get the kind of impactful results you have, what would you coach people to do? You know, I think, um, so I think I was able to take a lot of risks because I didn't feel like I had a lot to lose. And that was totally informed by my cancer experience. And I can't say, I can't tell everyone, go out and act like you, you have nothing to lose. That's something that you either feel it or you don't feel it. And there's lots of people that are fearful of failing. But I think what has really helped me along the way is that I am not scared to know what I don't know and to ask for help and to ask for questions. And, and I think, I mean, I just did it on a call earlier today with a woman that I had just met. I wanted to run an idea by her because I felt she had the expertise that I did not have. I am very quick to admit when I'm out of my sort of comfort zone. And so that's also vulnerability, right? It's admitting what you don't know. I think sometimes people feel like you have to have it all together in order to launch something. And it's so not true. It's like surrounding yourself with people that may know the answer to the things that you don't know or figuring out how to find the answer. So I, I think vulnerability is honestly key. It's key to our relationships. It's key to growing a business. It's, it, it's key to everything. I don't know why we have to always act as if everything is perfect all the time because it's just not. And I think we're seeing that change even when you open up the news, people are really owning their experiences now in a real and meaningful way. And people are talking about mental health in a way that we have never seen before. It's becoming so much more normalized as opposed to stigmatized. And I think for me, when I had my cancer diagnosis, I knew I had two options. I either could retreat and allow myself to be silenced, or I could be very vocal about what I was experiencing and help myself and then in turn help others. And that's what happened. That's, that's fantastic. Perfect, perfect answer. Uh, Jenna, before you go, would you take just a minute and tell people how they can learn more about Twist Out Cancer and how they can connect with you personally, perhaps on social media? Yeah, you can find us at twistoutcancer.org. We're on all the socials, maybe not really TikTok. We should be on TikTok. It's like so twist, but we can't. <laughs> yeah, it's so twist. It's very twist. Um, but yeah, we're, you know, and you can always email me at Jenna at twistoutcancer.org. I would love to hear from you. Fantastic. Well, Jenna, again, thank you so much for being with us today. We wish you every sex, every success in your continued journey. Uh, in your continued journey, we, we would love to see you continue to uh, survive and thrive personally and certainly to help other people uh, survive and thrive in their cancer journeys. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All righty. Let's do some good. Thank you for tuning in to the Superpowers for Good show. Twice each week, we host changemakers who share their impact, insights, and superpowers. Don't miss another episode. Subscribe today at superpowersforgood.com. 
That's superpowers number four, good.com. Be super empowered. Get your copy of the book, Superpowers for Good, as an ebook, audiobook, paperback, or hardcover edition via your favorite online retailer. Interested in having me speak to your company, organization, or association? Visit devonthorpe.com. Then let's talk. Now, keep using your superpowers for good. Together, we can reverse climate change, improve global health, and eradicate poverty.